Well, hi friends. Welcome to my channel, JB's Crochet. I'm your host, Amber. And today I just was like, I want to show off all the blankets that I can find that I have made for my kids. There are a couple missing because I don't know where they were. I didn't really do a lot of searching around the house for them. So I have a giant pile that I didn't move close enough to me. So I may be reaching over, but I wanted my phone back far enough to show you these blankets. So in, you know how it is when you're with me, I do things on the fly sometimes and I don't really plan very well. So this is uh, what you get when you come to my world. So I'm going to put a whip off to the side for a moment pull up a loop so it doesn't fall out. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can get these without. <laughs> okay. So hold on just a second. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um, I had to step away for a minute because I have kids that just, for some reason, can't get along. Most of the time, if it's if they're getting something they want, they'll get along. <sighs> but then, you know, most of the time they aren't, and it just drives me nuts. It's just one of those days where apparently we just need to be at our, our, our each other's throats. So. Where is it at? <laughs> okay, so one of the most, probably one of the oldest blankets that I have made for my children is this one right here for my daughter. It's a little rough around the edges because it's well loved. This thing goes everywhere and anywhere with her. And so it does have to get washed on a fairly regular basis. I don't know how much longer it's going to last because as I'm sitting here feeling it, it's really thin. <laughs> this blanket used to be so plump and like, out. so then I made this originally for some friends of ours that was having a girl and um, they moved away when we were in the military and I didn't get their address of where they were going to. So I held on to it and said, well, maybe I'll have a daughter one day and I did. So look, you can tell this is early on in my, <laughs> I've never liked sewing in my ends. Look, and this is proof. Look how <laughs> like they're so like pull, like stretched. It's so bad. Like I said, I don't know how much longer this thing's going to last. I am trying to convince her to get rid of this one and get, make her a new one. I will make you a new one child. I will. Mama loves you enough. I will. I still have the pattern for it, so I can make it bigger for her. Ugh, it smells like her too. So she loves the smell of it, but yeah, it's a very stretched out blanket. It used to be a lot closer. Um, and it has this like shell border. You can see how flat this is. Like it's so thin and how from washing it and stuff, I didn't know any better. And so it's kind of flat. Um, Y'all, she's gotten sick a few times with cuddling this thing, and so it's had to be kind of sort of dried a little bit. <laughs> but it is a baby blanket that has been stretched out past the size of a baby blanket. <laughs> I mean, it's still small, but again, it's one of those blankets, one of those Linus blankets that she just likes to do this with. So <laughs> there's that one, and it's made strictly with Karen Simply Soft. But I left the fringe on it because I was like, it's short enough that it wasn't going to, you know, like, um, get tangled up on a kid or, you know, strangle them or anything like that. I was never worried about that. So, um, the next one in succession was the one that I've referenced a few times, um, that I made for my middle child. He was my, obviously my second child. Um, I made his blanket with all Red Heart yarns. And I think if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure this is all Red Heart. Again, this one's very smashed and like 
probably dried it when I shouldn't have dried it without really, I mean, I knew the washing instructions for it, but I was naive. I don't know, but it still looks okay. It still looks good. But this is a blanket that it's a square baby blanket that it's almost like a stitch sampler. It's got all kinds of different stitches throughout it. Um, it was like a fairies, something fairies blanket. Like I searched it, um, several months, weeks ago, like last year, or I don't even know when it was. It was a long, it's been a while since I did it, but I was able to come across the, excuse me, the pattern that this, I made this from. And it was made with like all these like, excuse me, these fairy like pastel greens and pink and blues and yellows and whites and like eastery kind of garden just very girly colors and so I actually took the pattern and picked out what I called boy colors <laughs> more boy colors you know the the reds and the yellows and more of a primaries um and then this is actually Mexicana right here so every time I see one, the Yarnatic talk about this yarn, I go, I've used that one like a decade or so ago. Like that Mexicana has been around for a while because I know for 100% certainty this is Mexicana. So it's so cool that that yarn is still around. But yeah, this is another baby blanket. He doesn't really snuggle up with his as much as she did, um, but he still has it in his room. And it just kind of gets drug around the house. It gets used for playing with. And but yeah, I mean, this is a blanket. It's been around for, he's 10, going on 11 this year. So he's had this blanket for a decade. So it's holding up well. Um, my daughter's had hers for 13 years, but it's been made for probably about 15 or so years. It was early on in my crochet career. So it's been almost two decades on hers. And so... Hers is still holding up pretty well, but I really need to make a new one. Because it's, I don't know how much longer she has with it. Um, okay. One of my third child's blankets is actually, so three of the blankets I've made my kids is in the camper. And I, I have to open up slides to get to the bunkhouse where the room's at. I just didn't. Maybe someday I'll do that when I get into the camper again. <laughs> but I have a few blankets that happen to be out of the camper that belong to my my youngest um, third child. And this... Um, this was a blanket done, uh, a pattern from the crochet crowd. I cannot remember which the one this is called. But it is... Oops. Um, it's actually missing about six inches of the blanket because my kids were playing with it and it got snagged and a hole got put in it. So I literally, I figured out a way to frog off from the, where it was ripped up to the outside. So like this was what was left, um, from the inside of the rip. So I was able to, um... Uh, save this part but it's super small um like it's a lot smaller than what it used to be it's definitely baby blanket size it may be one that I donate because it really just gets again like my middle child's blanket I just showed you it gets thrown around it doesn't really this one really it's not one of his favorites he doesn't really use it it's fine it's fine <laughs> I do love the colors in it though. Those, I think I like it because it's got my colors in it. And then when I was pregnant with him, my third child, I got into a baby blanket making phase with him. And so he ended up with four baby blankets. Again, one of them is in, actually, I feel like there's another blanket, yeah made with the same yarn I just showed you, the of the blanket, the green blanket I just showed you. I think I have another one made with very similar colors. I 
feel like he has four blankets, but for some reason this one here in my lap is making me think he only has three because it's the other green one I'm thinking of, but I think he's got, yes, he does actually. It's a, it's a striped one. I don't know where that one is. I think it's in the camper that or it's hiding somewhere downstairs. So anyway, I just had, this is a, I think this is one of those Karen cakes um, that I had. I don't know. I honestly don't remember to be honest, but it is made in C2C. And so it worked up really quick. It's a small square blanket. It's a little small for him now. So again, this isn't, this is one of those blankets that hangs out in the camper, but it came in. I told the people, I told the people, I told my family when we were unpacking from the last trip we went on to bring all the bedding in. Well, these two blankets, even though they didn't get used, got brought into the house. So now I got to get them back out to the camper eventually. <laughs> this is the other blanket I'm, re I'm referring to. So these are three different skeins of yarn that I put together in another C2C. I love this one too. So I just alternated the colors. Looks like I did the light blue, variegated, then the white, then the dark blue, then the variegated, the white, the dark blue, and the variegated. So I don't know what my pattern was there, to be honest. You know, my, my tails are staying in very well. So whatever I did for these tails, I need, I wish I could remember because <laughs> I can't find them anywhere. Okay, so I did the variegated dark blue, white, variegated dark blue, white, variegated dark blue. There's not a light blue in here. I'm seeing colors that aren't there, apparently. <laughs> okay, so back to my oldest. I'm going to try and... Um... Okay, so the blanket that I told you that they got the rip in it, <laughs> I decided to make one for my daughter. This one's a monstrosity. Oh, my land. Uh, uh, there's absolutely no way <laughs> I'm showing you this whole blanket um, in this video. Um, <laughs> it's that same blanket that I made for my, my youngest um, that got a hole in it. And like I said, I'll show you the part that I ended up ripping off of his. Let's see. I think. So on here, it's almost a foot of the border because of the size of yarn I used. So from, let's see, I think, it has the really tall ones, where are those at? Probably right here. Or it might be those, I don't know. Or these right here. I think it was to here, maybe here. So the last foot on this one is what I ripped off. So this right here, or maybe it was just this part right here that I had to rip off. I can't show you this whole blanket, but <laughs> I used a chunky yarn and I did not estimate how big this thing was gonna be when I started making it. And I started it and I was like, I'm gonna finish this thing. And it is finished from beginning to end. It's huge. It's a, it's definitely a weighted blanket too. <laughs> like it's giant. Um, I think it's a six, a five or a six bulky weight. Oh, Hey, look, be happy. There's a sticker sticker stuck to it. <laughs> um, Oh my Lord. I'm going to try and show you as much as I, at least, you know, what I can fit in here. It's huge. It's huge. It probably fits a queen size bed. I have to lay it on my queen and see, but oh my goodness. I'm going to have to stand up and chuck this one over the top of the camera. Hold on a second. Sorry for the earthquake. <laughs> but that, that blanket, it's huge. Okay, so, um... The next ones I have are blankets that I made for all three of them. Ugh. 
they they were a very easy pattern to do and I had them I think they had them either I picked out the colors and said do you like these colors or I had them pick between a color or two or something like that so they had some say in their color choices um so I will start with the oldest these are they're not exactly straight they're definitely twisted but they are a spiral blanket um it starts here in the middle and it honestly I don't remember how I did this I'd have to go back and find the pattern but it spirals around the two colors just keep you like I think I st yeah I started here when I came around I started this one went around um and then started this one came around and then started the next color you know you just you keep adding somehow like that but here's hers I believe it's super soft, so I can't really tell you. I thought this was a, a red heart, this uh, blue and purple. Ver Just a minute, variegated. And then she has a bright pink solid mixed with it, and then this is a sparkly teal that borders it. All of them are identical in the pattern. They're just different um, colors. All right, I'm gonna pause real quick. I have a kid asking me. Okay, well, I had to start a whole new video because I had to call somebody and my video got turned off. <laughs> so, anywho, um, I just got done showing my daughter's blanket. Now I'm gonna show my middle child's. Um, this, again, same pattern, just, actually, no. These are all Hobby Lobby yarns. I said, I thought that was Red Heart on hers, the variegated one, but it's all Hobby Lobby yarns because this was during my phase where it was just all Hobby Lobby yarns. <laughs> so here is my middle child. It is a camo and that, um, you know, that orange color that hunters wear, that hunter's orange um, in between. Ooh, it's an optical illusion. Don't fall. <laughs> no. And then I used um, uh, brown for his border. He uses his blanket way more than she uses hers. So it's very, <laughs> very pilly and fuzzy. It has its little halo. Mm, they smell good. I don't know why. I must clean them well. All right, so I'm balling it up. I caught the phone, the tail end of the blanket. Sorry about that. <laughs> this one, I don't know why theirs is so soft because this is made with all the same yarn. His is a little more stiffer. I don't know why, but this is my youngest. His is all Hobby Lobby yarn as well. So I don't know if I'm just, I think it's possible I dried it to um, high and it, it got crunchy. I don't know. It's still a nice blanket. It's still big. They're all big. They're all about the same size. Um, his is, you know, this blue tealish variegated yarn. And then he wanted black sparkle. So he got black sparkle yarn. I don't know if you're able to see, you can kind of see the sparkle in the black there. And then I picked one of the solids out of the variegated is this like navy blue to go with it. So that's his, this is his sparkle blanket. We call this his sparkle blanket. So when he, whenever he's asking for a sparkle blanket, this is what we get. <laughs> Cause he has sparkle in it and he likes his sparkle. He wants a red and green sparkle. He sees all these sparkle yarns at Hobby Lobby and just loves the sparkle yarns. I don't know why, but he does. Um, I want to say before, before I made those spiral blankets, I made this one for my son because he's in he's in Spider-Man. So it is a star blanket specifically made from a Spider-Man pattern that they used a star blanket for. Um, and so I made him a blue and red, black Hobby Lobby yarn. So it's soft and cuddly. It's big. I wanted to make sure it was big enough for him to cuddle in, and it's definitely big enough. So he has his Spider-Man blanket. Um, I have not made another one of these, and I don't know that I plan on making another one of these. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to do this without 
Okay, hitting the the um, tripod and phone again. <laughs> All right, last but not least, um, my most recent blanket that I've made my children. Now, like I said, there's a, there's three blankets that I believe are still in our camper that I will show some other day. I don't want to have to pull slide outs to make to show you guys, <laughs> but I will show you eventually. One of them's a C2C, so there's not really much to it. It's using Karen uh, Karen Cakes when they were first when it was just the original Karen Cakes. Um, actually, both of them are both Karen Cakes. One's a C2C for my daughter, and the other one I used a a ripple for his, and so it, it changes colors through the ripples throughout the blanket. Um, and then my youngest has a blanket I made when he, a baby blanket that he has used in the camper, but it's in the camper. I haven't made him a camper blanket because I made the the two oldest their camper blankets before he needed a blanket, a, a camper blanket. So when I say camper blanket, they are twin size blankets. So they fit, you know, the width of a twin size bed and the length of a twin size bed. They don't really drape over too much. Um, so last but not least, this blanket that I'm about to show you was actually an attempt for me to make a cardigan. A, a cocoon shrug style cardigan. I had sewn the sleeves shut and went, I don't like the way it turned out, but this yarn is so soft and so cuddly. I very carefully took out the sewing that I did and turned it into a C2C blanket for my youngest because I think yeah, because it was small enough for him, I was like, you know what, I'll make it for you. So he has yet another blanket. So he sleeps with this one almost every night. It is used using Premier Puzzle. Uh, I think this is Sudoku? I'm not entirely sure what colorway this puzzle yarn is, but it's a decent sized blanket. It's almost not quite long enough and big enough for him. It actually goes on him like this where the stripes, I don't know. No, I can't tell. It just depends. I think, okay, I think it's this way. Um, it's almost square, so it doesn't, uh, I, it, it's almost more square than it is rectangle, but it does have a rectangular shape to it because of the shrug that I made. But anywho, after I got to make, after I got done with it, it wasn't quite big enough for him. So I went around and I added this border to it. It's just a simple double crochet border. I started with the granny, the modern granny, where I did the single crochet chain, single crochet chain, and then I added the stitches into it. But then the two rows after are just straight two rounds of double crochet, just to give it more width, just to get it bigger. Um, it almost needs a little bit more for it to get bigger for him. But again, it's a, it's one of those like, I don't know, just a nice, small, cuddly, soft blanket for him to use. So, I hope you enjoyed this show and tell of all these blankets I've made for my kids over the years. I am making yet two more blankets for my kids, probably not the last. <laughs> so, um, I thought, why not share this for you guys? Because, yeah, it, gave, it gives me more content to at least have something to put on my channel, so I'm not, like, I'm not struggling to find content and I don't want to just, I don't want to stress about it, but I thought I was just, I, you know, and I'm not worrying about it or anything, but I just, it keeps running through my head. What can I do? What can I show you guys? What can I talk to you guys about? What, you know, and I know you guys are going to comment me in the comments, but I don't feel adequate enough. I don't feel like I'm an expert in the field and I'm not. But I want to show and tell what I know and what I what I think in my head, you know, and hopefully <laughs> you guys enjoy it, really, truly enjoy it and um, are actually getting something out of it. Um, that's ultimately what I'm just just here to have fun and just share this, just everything I do with yarn, <laughs> um, because it's not going to be just crochet. I have a knitting machine. I have Tunisian hooks that I'm going to get into. Um, I'm debating getting back into knitting. I have tried, I have taught myself how to knit, 
um it's been so long that I would it's literally been like 10 years or more since I knitted I actually had knitting needles but I got rid of them because I wasn't doing it anymore should have done that that's okay um so if I picked it up again it would definitely be um I'm st I would still consider myself a baby knitter because even my my skills even then were not polished yet like they were still baby knitting skills <laughs> as one calls them. I'm still, yeah, I'm back to newborn in the concept phase of conception phase of knitting. Like I just, I would have to start all over and reteach myself, which I don't know, maybe I'll do that down the road, like in like next year or I don't know, it just depends on how I get my flow figured out because I want to keep making stuff to be able to show you guys all these how I am learning stitches, how I am using stitches, um, and tools and all that, what, all that good stuff. So, um, I know this is long winded here at the end, but, um, where was I going? So yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm only worried in the sense that I don't want to have to s take other, I mean, I don't want to stick. We're all sharing our ideas. And, and I know a lot of people out there that I follow are like, please, you know, if it's something you do, use it. You know, if it's what you want to do for your channel, do it. You know, so it's like, I just, you know, I'm one of those people. I just don't want to cause conflict. I don't want to cause drama. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. And even if they tell me I'm not, I just, I don't want to be that person, you know, just so it's like, um, I want to make sure I'm being original to myself, but honestly, like I have, I take inspiration from others. Like that's just how I work. Like, yes, I'm designing simple stuff and yes, I'm designing end of story, but it's like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting my feet wet in that, in that area of, of yarn. So yeah. If there's seriously like if there's anything like you're seeing on other channels that maybe you want me to try out like you know I might be willing to do like yarn type reviews or hook reviews or stuff like that um I do have different kinds of hooks um but it may not be like all the time those things will come very sporadic because you know they cost money um let's see oh doorbell ring so that's all i have for you guys i'm actually gonna take that as a cue and i'm gonna hop off here so have a great day everybody i hope you enjoyed this video so give me some thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video friends bye